world of fun and fantasy and ever-changing views and computer terminology. Commodore's news. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you. Hi, I'm Graham. Welcome to the Commodore Cave. Today we're going to take a look at the Amiga 1060, more commonly known as the Sidecar. They were introduced around 1987 to cater for IBM software, and at that stage they were selling for around $1,000. I got mine a few years later for the massively reduced price of only $150. The A1060 Sidecar is an XT computer running at 4.77 MHz on an 8088 processor. It comes standard with 256 kilobytes of RAM. This one's upgraded to 512K and can be increased up to 640. This was a full-blown IBM XT computer which attached the side of the Amiga 1000 through the expansion port. It then shared the resources with the Amiga, such as the monitor, keyboard and mouse. The Amiga 1000 was almost impossible to expand and this was a viable and economical option to add a hard drive to it. So I split a massive 40 megabyte drive into two partitions and shared 20 meg with the Amiga and 20 meg with the IBM. There are three 8-bit ISA slots in it and a 36k floppy drive. I originally owned a sidecar way back in 1990, so this is a computer that was definitely on my shopping list. And finally, after a few years of searching, I found one on Gumtree that was sold as working, but as is due to age. Of course, when it arrived, it didn't work. When I connected it up, I found that the red lead was the only sign of life, the drive never started, and there was only garbage on the screen. After many efforts to boot it, the sidecar once gave me a chirp, so I felt there may have been hope for it yet. So I took it over to my technician guru to see if it could be saved. He had to replace all the RAM chips and then go through every logic chip one by one to find the bad ones and then replace those. Then the PELs and the PLA also needed replacing. Now this computer was almost more trouble than it was worth with many, many hours and resources going into restoring it. It connects to the Amiga via the 86 pin expansion port on the side and the mouse and joystick ports are passed through to the front. The floppy disk drive sits up above it. On the first level we have the floppy drive and the power supply. We'll take that off. Now we can see the daughter board. This is the top board that interfaces with the Amiga. Have a quick look at the chips. And the opposite side. And beneath that, the motherboard, which is the XT computer. In it, we have the hard drive controller and a games card. The hard disk will auto boot under Kickstart 1.3, so we need an MS DOS floppy disk to boot it. We turn it on via the sidecar, power switch is at the back, asks for the Kickstart 1.3. And now the workbench. This is running up the Janus library. This sidecar has got a hard disk installed in it. There goes the sidecar. It'll run on PC mono or PC color. I'm running at PC color. So it's booting off a drive. Behind that, we have our Amiga still running, so I can run both computers independently of each other. And if I double click this screen, it will take up the whole monitor. And once that finishes, it switches to C. Does this look familiar? X3 Pro 1987.
let's run check it so this is the genuine IBM XT computer that's the benchmark test and if you've forgotten how slow IBM is this will remind you and we're running a CPU at 4.77 megahertz we'll get sysinfo and look at our configuration we'll do a reboot control alt delete there's the familiar RAM test MS Works, another one of my favorite programs, word processor, spreadsheet and database, as well as communications. There's our drop down menus. Very sophisticated for the day. Let's try Gremlins. Not bad for CGA. I can install a VGA card, of course, and get better graphics still. We have the lousy IBM speaker. Not quite up to Amiga standard, I admit. I have to say, it is very rewarding to see that original IBM software running on the Amiga today. I'm glad we didn't know how much effort was going to be required to restoring this computer. If we did, I doubt very much it would ever have worked again. Well, that's it for me from the Commodore Cave. Thank you for watching. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, leave a thumbs up, or better still leave a comment, or better still subscribe. Till next time, from the Commodore Cave, see ya. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you.